This is a prayer, actually, of the Apostle Paul. And um, how many know how this prayer starts? It's nice to know how something starts. <laughs> and there's a whole variety of things in between. But this prayer, it starts uh, where Paul is saying, let me bring this up first. Yeah. Yeah, it begins... The above and bond life of victory, that's what I'm calling this. And the scripture is Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Isn't that something? See the way these three words are put together. People don't often put them together like that. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. <laughs> that's not just a little bit above. I tell you, this is way above, far above where we're probably all living right now. God wants to take us to the highest place that we can possibly go. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we, look at this, ask or think. Some version it says ask, think or imagine or dream in your wildest dreams. God can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond that. And then it says, according to the power that works in us. And so you see here, I tell you, we have to start thinking bigger, believing bigger, and expecting bigger things from God. Amen. Because God wants us to ask. He can do more than that. I always say, think as high as you can and double it. Believe as big as you can and double it. Dream as big as you can and double it. And it's still not enough. It's still not high enough. God wants to take us much further. He wants all the limits to be broken in our lives. And there's a lot of limits that people can put on us, a lot of limits we can put on ourselves. You know, and that'll be talked about during this conference as well, the different limits that need to be broken. But you know, Ephesians 3.20, it begins, this is a prayer, and it's at the end of the Apostle Paul's prayer, but he begins by saying, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named yeah. for this reason I'm praying the whole family both in heaven and earth is named I bow my knee for this reason and he wants to see this family the fa he wants what does that mean when you bow your knee what would that mean if you bowed your knee to someone it means submission doesn't it he's saying look basically for this reason I bow my knees I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in submission to the father of this family I'm going to be in submission to the father of this family. And then, and then you see all of the things that flows in the next few verses. is security, identity, protection, power, and everything else. And it finally ends with this verse. Now unto him who is able to do. Now if somebody's able to do it, does that mean they're going to do it? No. No, it doesn't, does it? I'm able to do a lot of things, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do everything. I'm able to do it exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think and then look at this word according according means it's measured by this the power that's released is measured by this according to the power that works in us not just the power that resides in us you get filled with the Holy Ghost it's not just talking about getting filled it's talking about the power that's working in us yeah. now what is it that activates that power well, faith, but, you know, faith in what? Yeah, and his word, it's his word. When you get his word, it says, don't be hearers of the word, but it says, be doers of the word, doesn't it? Be doers of the word, otherwise you deceive your own self. Nothing really happens until you become a doer of the word. It's once you start doing God's word that power begins to work within you. It really does. I tell you, this is an incredible verse in, uh, in um, 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. Do, do we have that at all uh, in the Amplified Bible? Have we got it on the screen? Look at this. Look at this verse here. We also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, look at this, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God. Now, I love this. It says, which effectually is effectually at work in you who believe exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to, trust in, and rely on it. Isn't that powerful? You know, so, so here you see, I mean, here's the power effectually working. 
is effectually working for this group here that received it not as the word of man but as the word of God and then not only those but those which are those which exercise themselves exercising in its superhuman power in those who are dear to trust in and rely on it. it means we're going to hear it and do it we're going to trust in it. We're going to rely on it. To this group, there's a superhuman power that works within us to change us and empower us so that we can be and do and live that exceedingly abundantly above life. A victory. You see, it's wonderful. It really is. It's a little bit like this. I tell you, and every time we get together, when believers get together, I tell you, there's revelation in the room. I mean, God is there in the midst of you and he wants to reveal himself to you. Remember what it says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12 in the Amplified Bible? It says, when a worshiping congregation gets together, it says, Jesus is there declaring the names of the Father over the brethren. Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Rapha, uh, you know, Jehovah Manisu, Jehovah Shalom, your peace. All of the different names of God, the different aspects of his ministry, and he's here. Now, I tell you, when we get together, we, you need to believe God. I know, to our real attorney, he said, I get all my good ideas in church. Made millions of dollars just coming to church. And God drops an idea in his heart, how we can do this, how we can do that, how we can do something else. You need to believe God for something when you come. Yeah. Believe you're going to get some revelation. You need to have your antennas up. Like, this is my antennas. Let him that hath an ears to hear. Let him hear, Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I tell you, it's like this, you've got your antennas up. We are going to hear what God is saying. I'm going to receive from God. I'm going to get something today, tonight, from God. And over this weekend, all you need is one word. It can change your life. One word can fix your marriage. One, one, uh, one word can, can grow your business. And one word can build your church in a powerful way. Yeah. It really can. You've got your antennas up. I tell you, you should receive from God. You download it. Into your, into your hard drive down here. Huh? And then, when you begin to do it, it stretches you out. And you begin to, begin to, begin to, grow, begin to grow. Now I've got a revelation, I'm going to adhere to it. I'm going to, I'm going to trust in it, I'm going to rely on it, I'm going to act on it. And as I act on it, I stretch out. So I get the revelation, I download it, I stretch out, and then I take off. That's the process. I download, stretch out, and take off. I'm going higher. Glory to God. God's going to take us to another level. He really is. Another level of victory. Another level of faith. Another level of experience. Another level of vision. God wants to do it. And that's kind of the process that happens. We receive the revelation. We act on it. And then we take off. Something happens on the inside of us. I tell you, this verse is the key, I put this, it's the key to unlock a change in the way you think. To be able to believe God for the above and beyond. How many of this is where all change begins? It begins in your, in your, you got, if, you, if you don't change your mind, yes, that's right. there's, there's never any real change that takes place in your life. So there has to be change. That's why Romans chapter 12, 2, it says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Don't just, just uh, take for granted the natural culture that you live in, it says in one version. No, it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in your life. I tell you, God's perfect will of God for you and for me is good. God's perfect will of God for this church is tremendous. Amen. It really is. So what we've got to do is get that. And so, um, I, tell you, you know, I put here this first point is bigger thinking. Expand your thinking power and dream big. This is one thing we need to do. Expand your thinking power and dream big. I don't believe anything really happens until somebody gets a God idea and a big dream. I tell you, you need a big dream. I, know, I remember going into one of the Hilton hotels once and when I was in there I looked in, in the drawer and there was a Bible and there was also a book called Be My Guest and that was the book written by Conrad Hilton you know the founder of the Hilton Hotel and he wrote it and um, the history of it and he was saying how that they started he came from Eastern Europe had nothing absolutely broke had no money you know and, uh, and, and they ended up with a little bed and breakfast you know, next to the railway station, and he'd be carrying the, 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 the suitcases over for people that would stay in the house, and the house would be filled with visitors. And then one day, you know, he got a vision, got a dream of what he could do, and, and, uh, and that was starting a hotel, which he did. But then he, that was the time in the 30s when the, the Waldorf Astoria was the, the greatest 
the most luxurious hotel in the whole world. That was the biggest hotel, the fanciest hotel in the whole world. And what he did, it, there's a big picture of it in the newspaper, and he cut that newspaper, he cut that cutting out. This is when he still had the bed and breakfast kind of a thing. Cut it out, and he put it on his desk and put a glass top over it. And he says, one day I'm going to own that. It's a picture. It's an imagination. There's something about imagination. It's, it's almost like God wants us to think bigger. This was him thinking bigger and imagining bigger. One day, I'm going to own that. 50 years later, he paid cash for it. Made it part of his hotels. 50 years later. I tell you what. But he, it was something, there was a vision in place on the inside of it. As far as what he believed God had for him. I tell you, God wants us to think bigger, dream bigger. I tell you, and sometimes we're dreaming too small, aren't we? We're thinking too small. And God has to enlarge us. Sometimes he has to take us on a journey to enlarge us. Remember what he did with Abraham? You know, Genesis chapter 15, Abraham's in the tent. And, uh, and God took him outside of the tent. And he'd already given the prophecy, I'm going I'm to make a great nation of you. And I'm going to multiply your seed. He's close to 100, never had any children. You know, I'm going to make you a seed. Look at this. I'm going to make you a seed like the stars in the sky. You see those stars up there? Every time you look at those stars, that's your seed, your children that's going to come from you. Mm. And he's thinking, man, I'm close to 100. My wife's 90. <laughs> How can this ever happen? But you know what? He says, against hope, he believed in hope. You ever, you ever read that in Romans chapter 4? Against hope, he believed in hope. In the natural, in the natural hope, there is no hope. But when it's based on the promise of God, then it's, then it's greater. It's a, con it's a promise of God. That means you've got a confident expectation that what God said he would do, he would do, regardless of the outward circumstances. And so he believed against hope that God would do it. And then he showed him the sand on the seashore. If you can count the sand on that seashore. He says, uh, he says, then your seed is going to be more than that. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and of course you've seen what's happened. It's not just the, the Jewish nation, the Israeli nation, but it's all the body of Christ. All of the believers, we are the If you're Christ, what does he say? You are the seed of Abraham and heirs to the promise indeed. Isn't that right? So we are Abraham's seed. And of course right back there in that promise, before he even had any children... There was a promise. This is what it's going to... And Abraham believed God. And that was counted to him for righteousness. And he became the father of faith. Because he believed what God said. And then when God told him to do something, he obeyed it. You know, and God gave him exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. All he could ever think or even ask. Now, tell what, so you've got to expand your mind. We have to expand our mind and you've got to expand your thinking power and dream big. Joshua 1 and verse 8 is a powerful verse. It says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way, what? Success. Prosperous, and you will have not just success, but you're going to have good success. Yeah. So we got to do something, and then God will do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to do something. What do we do? We make sure this word doesn't depart from out of our mouths. That means when we speak, we need, need to... It doesn't mean we have to run around walk quoting scripture, but it means we have to speak in line with the principles in God's word. Yes. We have to speak in line with God's character, God's nature, God's word. Yes. You keep it. You don't sit and listen to rubbish all the time. Man, you're going you're gonna to switch the rubbish off, and you're going to listen to what God has to say, and then you're going to meditate on his word. Meditate is you are going to think deeply and meditate on what God's word says, meditate. It means you turn it over in your mind. You ask questions about it. Meditate on his word day and night and observe to do all this written in. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success because something happens when you meditate. Yes. When you meditate on God's word, yes. there's two things happen. One is your old way of thinking is destroyed. Yes. And a new way of thinking is established. Mm -hmm. And so you get a higher way of thinking. You know, God's way of thinking, not your own natural, earthly, worldly way that is many times just totally against God and his word. And that's why Isaiah 55 and verse 8 and verse 9, look at this. It says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. 
Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so this is what happens when you meditate. When you meditate in words, you're getting his thoughts, which are higher than yours. His ways, which are higher than your ways. And you're destroying your old worldly ways. And so now you're getting higher thoughts, higher ways. And he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 2.16, you can have the mind of Christ. That's what I love about Margaret Thatcher. She said, when Christians get together, we don't get together to get the mind of the majority. We don't get together to get the mind of the pastor or my mind. We gather together to get the mind of Christ. That's what she said. We get together to get the mind of Christ. And you know what? The thing is, we can. As we get into the Word together, we can find out what the Word says. We can hear what the Spirit is saying about it. And it's amazing how God gives, He gives the body of Christ pretty much the same revelation. You know, nothing is special just to you. If He's given it to you, then you can be sure He's going to give it to somebody else. Not only one, but if it's a major revelation, everybody gets it. Everybody that's really seeking God. So, you know, be careful if somebody's got this special revelation that nobody else has. Because it usually means that's not from God. It's usually error. Because when God imparts a vision, he gives it. He gives it to everybody that really wants to do his will in that area. He really does. That's what's powerful. So here you see bigger thinking, expand your thinking power, and you dream bigger. And God takes you on a journey sometimes to expand you. He just wants to expand you. You know what it says in Acts 20 and verse 32? It says, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance amongst the saints. Build you and give you in that order. He doesn't want to, if he gives you before he builds you, then what he gives you will destroy you. It's like your kids. You don't give your kids everything when they're five years of age. Why? Because some of the things you could give them could destroy them. So you, there's certain things you withhold from them until they're responsible enough and old enough and big enough to be able to handle it. So we've got to grow. I tell you, God doesn't want to give us first. He wants to build us. Yeah. So what's he doing sometimes, even some of the tough times we go through, is to build us. I mean, hey, yep. you know, I mean, when there's a problem comes, it says, you know, through patience, faith and patience, you'll receive the promises. And I mean, sometimes everything may seem like it's going wrong. But sometimes things go wrong to make it more right. Sometimes, sometimes your rejection is God's direction, new direction, brings new direction for you. You know, so we've got to be careful we don't get bent out of shape just because something doesn't go our way. You know, sometimes we're happy. I mean, aren't you glad? I think Billy Graham's wife said, thank God God didn't give me the, the, the man that I wanted to marry. I would have married the wrong man five times. <laughs> but she got Billy Graham. <laughs> she would have married the wrong man five times if she got her way. Sometimes God can break things up. You know, so you don't go the wrong path in the wrong way. Don't get bent out of shape. You know? What does it say? It's in Proverbs 20, I think it is, 20 in verse 5, I think. It says, oh, verse 16. It says, um, man makes his plans, but it's the purposes of God for him that will stand. You know? And if your plans are not the purposes of God, the quicker you go bust, the better. <laughs> huh? I mean, some people, they go bankrupt. They go, oh, man, this is terrible, the worst thing. Oh, that could be, that could be the, the very thing that pushes you into the will of God. Be careful, you know. I mean, always in every situation, look for the purpose of God. That's good. What's God's purpose in this? Not looking for someone to blame. You know, I've got to blame somebody because of my failure. No, just look for, look for the purpose of God in it. Sometimes it can push you right into the will of God. And sometimes you don't recognize that until a couple of years later, if you keep your attitude right. If you don't keep your attitude right, you never realize it. I would say this, if you, if, you, if you allow bitterness to get into your heart, you get the wrong heart attitude, you'll never get on the right track. Yeah. Keep the right heart attitude, yeah. mm-hmm. and it'll keep you moving in the right direction. You know, I always pray that prayer for myself in Psalm 1611. It says, you will show me, you will show me the path of life. This is Psalm 1611. A lot of people know the last part of it. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. That's in God's path. (laughs) 
<laughs> you get in God's path. You'll be in his presence. You'll have pleasures forevermore. And his right hand, there's, there's joy and peace and victory. Wow. You pray, that's, I tell you, that's a very personal prayer. That's very personal. Peter prayed it on the day of Pentecost. And you look in Acts chapter 2 and you'll see it. Show me, you will show me the path of life. And there's a lot of people walking in the wrong path. It's, it's not like, you know, it's not like there's many paths of life. For you there's one and for me there's one. And it's up to us to find it. You know, so we've got a bigger thinking, expand your thinking power and dream bigger. Wow. You know, I know when, uh, when we started our first church, you know, it grew really fast. I'd only been saved three years. And the church grew really fast. We filled every, uh, every facility in town. And then eventually we ended up buying 43 acres, which we still have, on the Coaldale Highway. And I put a big sign on there, future home of Victory Christian Fellowship, on this big trailer. And I was very excited for the first six months. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this and this and this and this. And then after nine months... I found out how much it was all going to cost. Not only that, then the weeds started growing up. And I couldn't even look at that piece of property. I turned away from it and said, oh God, what am I getting these people into? Because you know it's going to cost me $500,000 just to get some of the utilities in there. Another few hundred thousand to build roads. Another, I mean it's going to cost me a million dollars before I even started. This is in 1982. You know, and I'm thinking, oh God, and I talked to my wife. And we're, oh, what are we going to do? And then we decided, you know what we're going to do? Let's go down to Oral Roberts University. You know, he's gone further than we have. He's got 500 acres of land down there. Everything's booming. You know, with his university, with his hospitals, with, with the schools and everything. So we got on the plane, we flew down there. And I had a look at what they were doing down there. And it stretched our imagination. I thought, man, if this guy can do this with 500 acres, I mean, what am I concerned about? I've only got 43 acres. You know, and I serve the same God. Amen. You know, that was Amen. the thing. You know, if he could do it for them, then he could do it for me. Yes. Yes. Glory Amen. to God. You know, and uh, we went back encouraged. Went back and we moved ahead with that facility and it was amazing what happened. You know, we, we, uh, the city architect got saved and he designed all the property free of charge. Then, the, then, then the, 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 the foreman for the city parks got saved and he designed all of the grass and the trees. And then the tree farmer next door got saved and they gave us all the trees and helped us plant all of the trees around there that you see there today and then two major contractors got saved one of them put five miles of septic field under our septic field under our soccer field and then under our baseball diamonds and then and then they built the parking lot which was acres of, of asphalt and then uh, and then put a big water retention pond in and then gave all kinds of money to the building two major contractors you know and it really you know the, the 500,000 that it was going to cost it, it it cost just a fraction of that and then the multi-million dollars to build the facility. It was pretty much paid off in about five years, which is incredible. You, you know, and there we are today. Now it's, now it's still there, 43 acres. We've got 15, 1,600 people there. And it's a major beacon, you know, in that part of the, of the world. It really is. And it's great to have it because we can have our conferences there. People can bring their campers and trailers and tents and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody, I tell you, people don't sacrifice for nothing. They really don't. And they don't sacrifice for something just today. But they'll sacrifice something small today for something gigantic they can see tomorrow. Yes, amen. They really will. You know, what I see happening tomorrow, I'm going to invest now for something that's going to happen later. But I can see it happening. This is the importance of vision. Vision casting. Where you see the vision. Our vision was run with the vision. And the scripture that God gave us for it was Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me through sacrifice. Not God making a covenant with us, but us making a covenant with God through sacrifice. And people gave all kinds of things. And you God blessed those people and multiplied them. And they've always been our biggest giver because God stretched them. Yeah. I tell you, whenever you get stretched in your thinking, stretched in what you're doing, you never shrink back to the same size. Yeah, that's true. You really don't because you realize the benefit of being stretched and what can happen with God's power flowing yeah. in you and through you. Yeah. So, bigger thinking, expand your thinking power, dream bigger. Yeah. You know, I've still got my, my report card from England when I was 11 years of age, 12 years of age. 
There's two things that they said. Number one was, George is above average in most subjects, but he would do much better if he didn't dream so much. <laughs> now, she, she saw the negative side of dreaming. The negative side of dreaming is you should be doing math when you're in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> or in the middle of Africa. <laughs> in your dreams. So you're out there, really. Your mind's out there. Your imagination's out there. But this is what you've got to do. That's the negative side of it. But, boy, I wish somebody had just told me the positive side of it. Positive. You know, the positive side is, man, nothing big ever happens until somebody dreams it. Oh. Everything we've seen, I've dreamed it before it ever happened. I've seen it before it happened. I've seen God gave us a vision. Young D. Cho said this. He built the biggest church in the world and he said, I take you know, it says in Acts chapter 2, it says in his last days he's going to speak through visions and dreams. Young men are going to have visions, old men will have dreams. Everybody else, we're all going to prophesy. We're going to be, going to be prophetic people, people that see into the future. People that are going to understand where we are and what's going to happen. You know, and then he says, what I do, he says, I take the paintbrush of prayer. And I dip it into the ink pot of God's word and I begin to write on my heart in visions and dreams. Yeah. You know, you know the, the visions and dreams I get, I get from Ephesians 3 and verse 20. I, I, uh, I, the visions that I like are visions that come through deep, imaginative thinking based on the word of God and prayer. Mm -hmm. Visions and dreams that will help people. Visions and dreams that will solve problems. Visions and dreams that will expand expand God's kingdom. And God can give any of us those dreams. Any one of us can get those kind of dreams. Yeah, it's not special. It's just something, something that if you've got a heart, you want to see it happen. Boy, I want, to, I want to see it happen. And you begin to ask God to place those things in your heart. One way that God speaks to you, how many know he drops things in your spirit and things in your heart? Yes, he does. Yeah. Talks about Nehemiah. He prayed for days. 40 days, I believe it was. And then God dropped it in his heart. He had a burden when he saw about how the children of Israel were suffering and the walls of Jerusalem were broken down when he prayed and fasted about it because they were his relatives and friends. It says, he said, God placed it in my heart what I should do in Jerusalem. God can place it in your heart what you should do in Ruzli. Yeah? And what you should do from Ruzli. Mm -hmm. Huh? Or leek. Yeah, or leek, yeah, or leek. Or what's the other place? Cheese... New chapel, New Chapel, like that. Okay. New Chapel. <laughs> Wherever the place you're from, I tell you, God's got a vision for every place. And if you're living there, you know, ask what, what your part is. And God can drop it in your spirit what you should do in that particular place. Bigger thinking, to expand your thinking power. Lord, show us new ways of doing things. Yeah. How can we do this better? How can we do it more creative? How can we build a great children's ministry better than it is? How can we build two great worship teams? How can we multiply the size of this church? What, how can we do it? What do we need to do? God can drop it in your spirit how to do it. So number one is thinking bigger and, and expand your thinking power. And then number two is bigger asking. It talks about in the Amplified Bible, in your highest prayers. God can do more above and beyond your highest prayers. Your highest thoughts and your highest prayers. God can do more than that. James 4 and verse 2 and 3, it says, You do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your own pleasures. No interest in God's kingdom at all. You know, it says in Psalm 35, I think it is, it says how God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, those who favor his righteous course. That means favor is you put that first. Man, that's my favorite. Yeah. His righteous courses. And, of course, the thing he's doing is building his church. That's the main thing. Everything else is offshoots of that. You know, so... God takes pleasure in our prosperity. Yes. You know, I mean, it's, it's so that for kingdom expansion, it's not, so, it's not for self-enrichment. You know, it's, it's, that's the trouble. It's not just so we can have, you know, self-enrichment. I mean, you'll do pretty good. I mean, hey. I mean, what, God, when, when we started, we started pastoring, we gave up everything. And uh, the Lord spoke to our hearts, Mark 10, 29 and 30. And it says, uh, no man gives up land, homes, houses, 
or anything for my sake in the Gospels without being rewarded a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come, eternal life, with persecutions. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, God's done that. You know, we found that you cannot outgive God. And we're given lands, we're given homes, we're given money, we're given all kinds of stuff. And then God just pours it back in you. He's got a bigger shovel than we do. Amen. And you always have more than enough. Really. Yes, than you know, God always looks after his kids. And, and so bigger asking in your prayers. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and verse 6 says, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. Huh? I mean, my goodness. He's saying, basically, you've got a rebuke. You know, when God says you go, don't say I'm not going to go. I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too sick. It's probably where your healing is and going and doing it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, God tells you to do something, then you can be sure that there's a, there's a blessing in it for you. Mm-hmm. On the other end of your obedience, there's always a blessing for you and others. There really is. Mm-hmm. And obedience is the key. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. You know, breakthrough always comes. Today's breakthroughs are a result of yesterday's yes. obedience. Yes. Amen. And tomorrow's breakthroughs are a result of today's obedience. And Abraham was obedient when God told him to do some tough things. It really was. And in this last verse, there's Jeremiah 33, 3. I love this. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Look at this, which you do not know. Man, this is an invitation. Call to me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Man, he knows how to grow your, he knows how to build a great family. He can show you how to build a great family. He knows how to build a great business. He can drop the ideas into your heart. He knows how, how, to, how to build a great church and, and uh, build great ministries within that church. And he can drop them into your heart. Lord, show me. I call unto you and ask you about our youth ministry oh, so that we can build a great youth ministry and put all the pieces in place and really do a powerful work in and from this area. How, hey, show us how we can build a, a powerful children's ministry. And, uh, and many people get involved and, 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 and learn and grow and become everything you want them to be. Well, you, you can do that as a church. We want to be involved. We want to see your work prosper. So we call and we ask bigger. And then the last thing is this. Bigger kingdom purposes are accomplished for and with God. They're accomplished, I tell you, as you begin to dream bigger, ask bigger, then there's great accomplishments that happen, you know, with God. More souls saved, more churches planted, more missions overseas, more ways of getting your gospel out, more ways of healing people and bringing healing and wholeness and health to families. I tell you, there's there's an incredible, incredible wisdom that we get from God. Not only that, but strength and power to do it as well. God never asks you to do something without giving you the power and the ability to be able to do it. I love this verse here in Hebrews 10, 36. It says, For you have need of endurance, so that after if you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So, you don't receive the promise before you've done the will of God. Some people got the promise, well, I want the promise. Well, you don't get it until after you've done the will of God. So the will of God, on this, it's like a bridge. There's a, there's a bridge over this big cavern here, on this side the promise of God, on that side the fulfillment of it (laughs) now after you've done the will of God step by step you're building a bridge across this cavern you're building a bridge and eventually you get to the other side and you've got it, and then you can come over and you get the promise, there's the promise this is the process the promise, then the problem with every promise there's a problem let's go across to the other side Jesus said it, and then a great storm arose. Well, didn't Jesus know what was happening? I mean, he wouldn't send his kids through that, surely. I mean, if you know a storm's coming, would you send your kids right through the middle of it? <laughs> well, Jesus did, didn't he? I mean, he, he, might, he might have said, well, why don't you just skirt around the outside because there's a big storm coming. No, he just got right through the middle. Because he knew a storm was coming. But he sent them right through, there was a problem. He wanted, he told them what to do He'd, already, he'd spent two days teaching them on how faith works. Yeah. 
And now he's given them an opportunity. Go over to the other side. Of course, they get in the boat, the big storm comes, you know, and all of a sudden the, the, the waves are coming over and Jesus is sleeping. And they're waking him up and saying, Master, Master, don't you care that we perish? And he says, Oh, ye of little faith. Where's your faith? And then he jumps up and gets up and he says, Peace, be still. Mm-hmm. And the wind and the waves calmed and they went across to the other side. Yeah. I tell you, there's a problem and there's the principle. The principle, you've got to apply the right principle, not fear and anxiety. It's faith and patience. Yeah, faith and patience. I'm in here, but I'm coming through. Jesus said, I'm going over to the other side. And if he said we're going over to the other side, doesn't matter what happens, we're going to get there. Isn't that right? Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of storm comes. Yeah. He's here in the boat with us. You know, and they forgot he was in the boat. Yeah, he was in the boat with them. And not only that, but they got his word. Let's go over to the other side. Yeah. And that's always the way it is. There's a promise, and then there's the problem, and then there's the principle, and then there's the provision. Wow, I got it. I tell you, the promises give you a glimpse of what the future can look like, what your marriage can look like, what your family can look like, what your finances can look like, what your church could look like, what your city could look like, what your country could look like. It gives you a glimpse. You can catch a glimpse of it through the scriptures, the promises, the fulfillment of the promise. But it takes some work and it takes some effort. I would say there's no drive without a dream. There has to be a dream where there is no vision that people perish. The dream has to be clear. The vision has to be clear so everybody can understand it. That's what I love about our Reach, Teach, Mobilize. It's very easy. I mean, hey, you can get a whole international vision in seven words or something like that. Reach, Teach, Mobilize, Leadership Development, Church Expansion and World Missions. That's for, that's for the local, the national and the international. It's not only the purpose but it's the process. You can feel one and it leads you to the next, that leads you to the next, leads you to the next. Simple. Easy to remember, easy to repeat, and easy to do. Glory to God. And great, great uh, fulfillment from it. Yeah. And so uh, there's no drive without a dream, there's no winning without work. Uh, it's not just going to happen. Somebody has to put their hand to the plow. You know, build a great children's ministry, somebody's got to work. Build a great nursery, somebody's got to work. But isn't it wonderful how God puts people into, the, into a congregation and there's somebody in there who loves to do what you hate? <laughs> there is. I mean, it's their passion. All you do is find out who they are. That's why I interview people when they come into church without them knowing it. I say, oh, it's nice to see you. Well, yeah, you look, you look like you'd be great with children's ministry. Oh, yeah, I love it. Oh, you do. Let me introduce you to. <laughs> I mean, whatever, for the things that you don't like to do, there's people that do like to do it. Don't think because you don't like it, nobody likes it. That's the way somebody, well, I don't like that, therefore nobody can like it. No. That could be the call on somebody's life, just to make the meals, and they love it. I remember one lady in our church, and she used to, she was, hospitality was her gift. She would love to cook and bake, and I thought, man, she's going to burn herself out. I said to her, you know, you, are you sure you're okay? Oh, no, this is not work to me. This energizes me. I love doing this. This maximizes me. You know, and I think it's wonderful when people find their place yeah. in the army, yeah. in the body, then they get maximized, and they have fullness of joy. Yeah. Wow. No drive without a dream, no accomplishment without action, no winning without work, and there's no real power without the God connection. You've got to stay connected to God to have the real power and the passion that you need to get it done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, I pray tonight. I thank you, Lord, for this congregation. I thank you, Lord, for Rusley. I thank you for Leek. I thank you, Lord, uh, Father, for all of the uh, churches in this area. And I pray, dear Lord Jesus, for your wisdom and guidance and direction. Uh, Father, to each and every one of the pastors and the leaders in each church. Uh, Lord, I'm just believing, Lord, that every congregational member will find their place. And each one will find their place of fulfillment and satisfaction in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let me ask you this. The, uh, what can you believe God to double in the next 12 months? 6 to 12 months. What would you like to see God double? 
I mean, there's a lot of things. He can do that, can he? You can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. But how about just double? You know? What would you like to see God double in 12 months? Anybody? Next 12 months? 6 to 12? Well, more than double that. <laughs> yeah, more than double. Okay, well, you could, you could double it in, how many, in, in three months, maybe. You know? Yeah, and, and, and then double it again in the three months after that. See, that's good. Yeah, I mean, we, we can double it in three months, six months. You can always change the time limit. Right? What else? Double, do you want to double yours? Good, yeah. That's well, nice to ask for it, you know what I mean? Hey? <laughs> asking See, he's asking you. Double, huh? double the leadership. Huh? Double the leadership. Double the leadership. Same? Double the leadership. What else? What else do we want to double? How about you? How about you? What else do you want to see double? The men's group. The men's. The men's, yeah. See, the men's group double, yeah. right? Why not? Yeah. What else? Women's ministry. Women's ministry, yeah. Double the women's ministry. What else? Finances. Finances. Anybody want to see the finances double? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to <laughs> yeah? You want to see your finances double? Well, hey, God takes pleasure. Some. 35 to uh, 35 27 I think it is God takes pleasure in the prosperity of the righteous yes. those who favor right. his righteous cause that means when you put God first he'll make sure you have more than enough yes, always. he'll make sure you got the opportunities and everything you need something else children's ministry, children's ministry. yeah wow that's the future what else worship team. Hmm? the worship team yeah two three worship teams yeah you should have two or three in everything. You should never have any one ministry just built on one person. Mm -hmm. Like in the back there in that sound room, there should be at least three people that can do that. You know, looking after sound, video, multimedia. At least three people for every position. You don't want anything, just, just one person responsible. Jacob, what about you? My mom's health. Your mom's health. There you go. You want to see it better. His mom's health. Isn't that right? And Father, I just say, stretch forth your hand towards Carrie right now. Yeah. Father, we just say, thank you, Lord, this young lad. You. Father, he desires to see his mother healthy, and so do we. Yeah. And Father, I just thank you for Carrie. I thank you, Lord, she's a woman of God. And I thank you, Lord, that this young man, Jacob, oh, Father, he's a, he's a young man of God with tremendous, incredible potential. Lord, he comes here every time, and he's open to the Word of God. I say thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful name. I thank you, Lord, he's a great blessing to his mother, and Father, and to others. But Lord, I thank you for Carrie. I've come against that that disease and that sickness yes. right now in Jesus mighty name and I thank you Lord for healing that multiple sclerosis in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord for the healing grace of God Lord there's nothing too hard for you you said Lord we can bring the needs to you you're the God that heals us and I thank you Lord you're in this place today I break every power of the enemy that would hold this young lady back and I thank you I break the power of that now and Father I say thank you for the healing grace of God in Jesus wonderful name we speak it we believe it we receive it we say thank you for it and we give the Lord thanks for it now in Jesus name give him thanks for it now thank you Carrie in the wonderful name of Jesus thank you in Jesus wonderful name thank you Lord isn't that great when you got a son like that he said I want my mother healed wow I tell you that's great it really is what else huh Newcomers. More new people. More new people. That don't know the Lord. That don't know the Lord. Yeah. Well, you know what we've got to do? We all have to, that takes all of us. We all need to seek to love one. Can we all love one? And then we all need to seek to win one. And then we all need to seek to disciple one. We all want to love one. Can we say that? Can we all love one, win one, disciple one? Love one, win one, disciple one. I can win one, love one, disciple one every three months. Every two months. Every one month. <laughs> every month. I mean, it's amazing. We can do it. You know, we're born again to do that, to reproduce ourselves, aren't we? We really are. Now, you know what would happen if we, just, if we all just did that? If we all just did that with one person in six months, we would double the church yeah. in six months. Huh? Yeah, amen. Wouldn't we? If we all just loved one, won one, and disciple one, we'd double the church in six months. We did it in a year, we'd double it in a year. Did it in three months, we'd double it in three months. Did it in a month, we'd double it in a month. 
But it means invitational evangelism is wonderful. It really is. Come here, a man. Brett. Double the number of victory churches in the UK. Double that. Amen. Double that. Yeah, we believe for that. Yep. And we will. Absolutely. We're believing for that. Yep. Believing for double. That means we need double leaders. Yep. Yeah. Double the leaders. Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's always the key to a great church plan is the leader. We need double the amount of leaders. We need worship leaders. We need children's ministers. We need administrators. Oh yeah, we need an awful lot. But you know what? We can do that. Let's train leaders. Let's train them. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, Jacob again. What, what else, Jacob? Huh? Peace. Double peace. Yeah. Yeah, we know what. Yeah. Peace that passes all understanding. You know what it says in... Uh, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. It says, Unto us a child was born, unto us a son was given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Of the increase of his government and peace. His government and peace go together. You get God's government in the home, you get government in your own personal life, you know, peace. You get government in the home, you'll have peace in your home. You get God's government in the city, you'll have peace in the city. You get God's government in the nation, you'll have peace in the nation. You get God's government in the world, you'll have peace. That passes all understanding. You know, it, it's not that complicated. Difficult to do. It really is, but I tell you what. That's, that's what it takes. God's government. Mm -hmm. His order. His way of doing yeah, things. Amen. It's His order, isn't it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm? Healing for this man. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What do you need? Physically, what do you need? Physically. <laughs> overall, Father, I just say thank you for this man. I thank you, Lord, for him physically, and you know what he needs. And Father, I pray even right now, Father, for the healing touch of God. Lord, you said we can come boldly to your throne of grace, and we can ask for mercy and grace to help in times of need. And Lord, you see the need in this man's life. You see the need of every person in this place. And Lord, you know the needs in this place tonight. And Father, we uplift every need to your throne of grace, and we thank you, Lord, for healing. We we thank you for provision. We thank you for life. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you for victory. We thank you for your order. And we thank you, Lord, you're bringing things into supernatural order in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, you know, how many here you've, you've, uh, you've had broken dreams? You've had dreams, and the dreams have never come to pass. Yeah, I mean, hey, I think, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, you know, there's a lot of dreams. We have a dream, but there's, there is the... If you look in Scripture, you'll find that there's the birth of a dream, and very often there's the death of a dream, and then there's a resurrection of the dream. The birth, death, and resurrection. When these, some of these dreams are resurrected, they come resurrected up in a different form a little bit, but sometimes we just get it wrong. You know, and God can work within us, and He can work within the situation. He can bring them back and resurrect them. Resurrect a dream. A dream for family, a dream for business, a dream for your ministry, a dream, you know, for your finances, a dream for your future. You had, that, had one of those dreams too, honey? You had a dream that was broken? Was that, did you have a dream that was broken or not? You, I see you put your hand up there. Is that for any reason? No? Okay, well, let's, well, let's, uh, let's do this. If you've, uh, if you've had a dream that you'd like to see resurrected, it's a dream that you had. It could be for business. It could be for family. It could be for marriage. It could be for a ministry. And, it, and all of a sudden it fell apart. And it, and it almost broke your heart. You know. And, uh, and that's happened to you. And, you, and you somehow you struggle, still struggle with that. And it's holding you back. It's one of those limitations. We want to break every limit, right? That's what this conference is about. Sometimes a broken dream can actually be one of those limits that stops you from ever having another. Or stops you from wanting another. Or stops you from doing anything. Let's get rid of those right now. If there's anything in that area that's going to limit you, let's, 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 let's break it. If that's you, just stand up where you are and we'll pray for you right where you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yeah, there's quite a few in this place tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, why don't you just come down here? I want to lay hands on you, just all of you. Just come right around. You know, I'm a, I'm a visionary, and, uh, and I get lots of visions, lots of dreams, and so many of them do come to pass. I just want to lay my hands on you and pray for a resurrection of those dreams in your life, uh, in a right way, in, a, in the way that God ordained it.